Hi there, my name is Casey Gray, Negotiating with Faye got me into this show, and you're watching D&D Expertise, Episode 2. The most boring possible way to play D&D is a combat encounter where you and your adversary take turns hitting each other until the person with worse numbers falls down. If you're feeling called out right now, that's correct, you are being called out. But sometimes I do it too, so that means it can't be a moral feeling. The people most likely to fall into this sinkhole of fun are game masters. Not because you're so good looking and clever, that's incidental, but because you have so goddamn much to do. You're controlling a dozen bodies, when every other participant only has to worry about, on average, one. And that shit takes work. You're also making sure everyone else at the table is having fun, the plot keeps rolling, and the players actually make it to the scene you spent three hours lovingly designing. That's for another episode, though. With all that to keep track of, who can blame you if the wolves just move towards the closest adventurer and do a taste test? Well, here's how to fix that before it ever begins, because preemptively eliminating a problem isn't just for the CIA. You might find the answer surprising, had I not literally put it in the title of the video, but it really is as easy as keeping their legs moving. I'd be shocked if this is the first piece of advice you'd gotten on making combat encounters more interesting, but it can be the most straightforward. Make the players move. You've got lots of options here. Collapsing ruins, fighting retreats, or my personal favorite, ever-rising water levels. All of these things literally make boring combat impossible. Try it. I dare you. Have a scene where the ancient elven bridge crumbles away and loses another chunk of stone each turn as its supports begin to give way, ever closer to the moment where it collapses down into the ravine. It's not as though most parties aren't already a force of nature mixed with a wrecking crew, so go ahead and wreck some shit. Nobody will mind. And, if they do, then now your new movement goal is getting the hell out of there before they catch you. And I haven't even gotten to falling objects or explosives yet. Anything with a growing shadow or a burning fuse makes it extremely clear that staying in the same spot is unwise, and they don't discriminate based on which side you're fighting for. Flying players can be a problem when the hazards are on the ground, but if they're throwing around more power than the world can too. An arcane blizzard is brewing, and you need to get to shelter before the gale force winds and razor ice become too fierce. Make them chase a train, carrying disastrous cargo and picking up speed or reach the sacrifice at the center of the zombie-infested multi-level city before the blood sacrifice starring your favorite NPC concludes with their horrible transformation at midnight into an unstoppable demon lord. Then reveal that the ritual was a distraction, keeping you from the second objective, and the villain is already three quarters of the way towards her prize. Now you have less than 30 minutes to reach the other side of the corpse-strewn town and stop her. Nobody at that level should have time to stand still, because villainous threats that bring their A-game don't wait around. 